Knitters! Welcome to episode 165 of the Knitty McPurly podcast. I'm your host, Devin Ventry. You can find me on Instagram as Knitty McPurly. I'm at knittymcpurly.com. And if you want to email me, I am Devin at knittymcpurly.com. And I hope that you will email me because today's knitting story is the last one that I have. Like, I need more knitting stories. I do not have one for next week. So, as you're watching this episode, let knitting stories percolate in your mind and see if you can come up with any so you can send them to me. This is our oral tradition. We gotta share it. So, I am drinking coffee today out of my Oregon mug. One of the lovely knitters who sent me this mug, this is her, her name is Erin. Hi, Erin. And she put this picture on Instagram. This is the Gardenium sweater by Gabrielle Knits. And she made it with Poirot, Fontaine, and the May color of the month, which beautifully coordinated with Poirot and Fontaine. Isn't it so pretty? Oh my gosh, I love it so much. And thanks again, ladies, for my beautiful mug. I love this one. It is so, so pretty. If you haven't seen, if you sent me a mug and you haven't seen it in a little while on the podcast, <laughs> it's possible that someone broke it. Uh, one or two of them have broken. They've been dropped by helpers. <laughs> uh, or it's possible that it's in someone's room somewhere and I just haven't seen it in a little while because it's in someone's room. Anyway, it is perfect knitting weather today. It's like 28 degrees, very cold, blue skies. You can see by the sun coming in that it's a little earlier than it normally is when I film. Um, I barely slept last night, but here's the, here's the ironic thing. I'm laying in bed and there's a dog in my bed, which I don't normally allow, but last night he was really insistent. So I was like, fine, you can come and sleep with me. As I'm laying there listening to a book about boundaries, <laughs> not sleeping because there's a dog in my bed. So it's a little irony. It's a great book, by the way, mom. My mom recommended this book to me. Super good. Anyway, yesterday, my husband and I took a little trip down to the Culpeper, Madison, Virginia area, and... We went to one of my favorite antique stores and I got this top. Let me show it to you. Isn't it fabulous? It's like velour. It's got these little sweatshirt cuffs and a little puffy sleeve and a big old fat collar. Oh my gosh, it is my favorite. There was a whole section in one of the antique stores that I really like, country shops or something, I need to go back because vintage clothing is just amazing. Before I go on, I had this idea at church today. I was totally thinking about Jesus, but I also thought about this a little bit. I was thinking about how, so you can see that like my arms are too long for my body. Like this is how all sleeves fit me. But how cool would it be if I took off the sweatshirt parts and I, well, I would do that last, but first knit a cuff that came longer and then removed this and then used a sewing machine to attach the knitted cuff and do the same thing on the bottom. Wouldn't that be kind of amazing? But I love this so tremendously, this top. It's such a great color. I just love everything about it. I paid $8 for it. It was a, it was a bargain. Uh, but I love vintage clothes, especially ones that can be machine washed, which I did machine wash this last night, tumble dry. So that's always nice. I was like, I don't know. Cause you know, you gotta, you gotta clean it. If it's been in a store, you have no idea where that thing has been and for how long. So anyway, uh, Another, I just have a couple of housekeeping things before I go on. I was thinking about doing a local knitting meetup where we kind of get together and knit together for people who are local. There's a winery right by my house called Sunshine Ridge Farm. It's where Maggie had her wedding, you know, Gigi's friend Maggie. And Maggie's pregnant, by the way. So I will let you know when we find out if it's a boy or a girl, because there will be baby knits for sure. Anyway, this is where Maggie had her wedding reception and it's super beautiful and uh, it's a winery brewery and I thought it would be really fun like on a Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon to get together. So if you're interested in that, let me know. 
And if enough people are interested, then we will definitely do it. Okay, progress and shop news. Sorry, that was a lot of stuff about not knitting, um, but it didn't take very long. So this week, I had my big Valentine's Day shop update. I feel like I'm like the color for Valentine's Day. I've been celebrating Valentine's Day for a while because as soon as I took down my Christmas decorations, I was like, I need Valentine decorations. It's good for this time of year. So our Valentine's Day color is very Valentine-y. Sorry, that's kind of bright. But this is the sock set. And here it is in Dubrovnik DK. This is February's color of the month, and it is available in the shop right now. Uh, I sent out my newsletter update to my newsletter subscribers, and they sold out very quickly, so I put up a pre-order. And I will be dyeing yarn tomorrow with the hopes of these going out by Thursday at the latest. So if you place a pre-order, they'll go out pretty quick. Uh, I've got a bunch already that I'm doing, and here it is in the fingering weight. Sorry about the light. It kind of blows out a little bit, which is weird because it's just not that bright. Uh, but that's February's color of the month. Um, Emily, who is Knock Knits over on Instagram, made a pair of socks with my January sock set, and here is a picture of that. They look so good. Oh my gosh, she did such a good job, and quick too like January just ended, but her goal is to do a pair of socks for every month of 2024. So there might be a few Nitty McPurly months in there. I'm hoping that'd be great. Um, anyway, if you want to go grab these, they're available in the shop right now. January's color is completely sold out. So if you want to get the color of the month, go get it. Like I said, it is a pre-order right now, but they'll ship pretty quickly. Uh, also, I have it here somewhere, I have balm. This balm came in the Valentine's Day kit. Oh, I didn't bring a kit up with me. I showed them last week, but there are still a very small number of kits left as of right now, or as of this morning, there were a couple left. So if you want a Valentine's Day kit and you didn't get one, hop on over and get one. If you're like, Devin, I watched the podcast, why is stuff sold out? It's because the newsletter subscribers get to shop first on Friday when the shop update happens, and then I announce it on the podcast. So the Valentine's Day kit has this sugar cookie balm in it with this adorable snack. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. And you can also get tins of this balm by themselves if you want that. There's uh, Hopefully there's a couple left of those too. Uh... If anything could be more exciting than February's color of the month and the Valentine's Day kits, it is that Nitty McPurley finally has red. <gasps> Hold on, let me tuck these ends so that it looks a little more dramatic. That was, that was lackluster. I mean, the red part was amazing, but uh, my ends, my ends were showing. There we go. Oh, <laughs> isn't it the most gorgeous red you ever saw? You can go a lot of ways with red. You can go like a dark burgundy. Uh, I originally had in my mind something that was brighter and more of a cherry, but it didn't coordinate with the other colors in my color palette. And this one I love even more. I love when red has a little bit of blue in it. That's the best kind of red, in my humble opinion. So I toyed with a lot of different names for it. Anything relating to wine would be a misnomer because it's really not a wine color. Uh, and so I went with Valentine because it's just such a pure, beautiful Valentine heart red, I think. But I've had requests for red for a very long time. So I'm really glad that I now have red. And you know what that means? That now I have red, white, and blue. <laughs> Jovis, Fathom, and Valentine. Uh, or you could go a little bit crazy and do like a... Oh, it's hard, it's blowing out. There we go. Frost, Barrel, and Valentine. That looks so good together, doesn't it? 
I love this combination, turquoise and red. So good. What else does it look good with? It looks good with everything. Ketchup and mustard. And oh, this reminds me of like African flags. You know how African flags have so many colors? Although is this Germany? No, <laughs> I don't remember. I'm not good at flags. Oh, this is probably my favorite combination. Valentine, Dusty, Jovis. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh, that would make the best faux set. Um, also, these are both similar in value, but Poirot. Poirot is so deep and dark and purple. But you could add in a lighter color. I'm going to just do it over here because this is better for the light. Like uh, Bougie. That's pretty bougie, Poirot, Valentine, or, uh, oh, did I show Morel? Oh, Morel, Poirot, and Valentine. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I've already had a couple of people order a sweater quantity because you've been waiting. You're like, where's the red, Devin? Give us the red. So it is there. I'm so excited about that. I'm already planning sweaters in my head. I get delusions of grandeur like all the time and just where I think I can knit all the things in the world. And then I sit down to work on a project and I'm like, why is this going so slow? Like I need like 10 pairs of hands. I need Hermione's enchanted knitting needles that knit for me while I sleep. That would be amazing. <laughs> okay, so I have two segments for you. I have Charlotte Shows Off and Crocheting with Gigi and so here are those crop this part out. Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Charlotte Shows Off. And here we have Charlotte with her crown. It's back. Yes, At I At the end have... of church, a guy came up to me and said, the hat's back. Because <laughs> there were a couple days that she didn't wear it to church. So I made the most cute thing ever. Okay, you probably just saw them because I have this camera. I made this, oh, and can I tell you something? Since it's almost Valentine's Day, this was an accident. It's a heart. It looks like a heart. Also, my nails are really pretty. <laughs> I did them. Yes, she did them. She has she the same them. ones. That and then is as so another great. another heart. I love this one. And then I made another because I was thinking, maybe I should make a whole rainbow. So I'm going to make a ma rainbow. And then I made him for the orange and he's kind of like one of those like ugly deflated b balloons with like that creepy like tint on them <laughs> it's so pretty but you made it sound not pretty but it is so how, tell us how you made Wait. these how did you make these well i actually have my stuff here let's see show it okay it might take a, a few minutes so well <laughs> <laughs> so i just okay. I have my pom-pom maker and mm -hmm. I got my yarn and I wrapped it around here till it was really fat. Mm -hmm. And then I got the other, cause I did white a lot and then I just did lots of pink, but I left lots of little white cracks so it would be like interesting. And it made a heart, like that was just totally yeah, random. Yeah, and then I just kind of cut it through there and then I opened it and then. Well, first you tie the string. Yeah, then you tie the string. If you don't, then it's just gonna it's be just, a little. It, yeah, it falls apart. <laughs> Oh, Charlotte shows off. <laughs> <laughs> Crocheting with Gigi. Yay! So I made another Kirby. <gasps> Kirby. Wait, which one's the first one? This one because he's uglier. There's okay. This is this is the original this is Kirby. Ugly Kirby. And here's ugly, his he's better cute. looking brother. So cute. I don't think I'm ugly. Yeah, it's all right. You get there, it's, man. it's all right. It's okay that you don't it's say it's that. It's all right. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to see it on yourself, buddy. <laughs> so, Gigi. Yeah. Is is one Kirby all you have to show for this week? I'm just wondering. I was just asking. I mean, I know you did like a lot of schoolwork and stuff. and Yeah, and like typing papers and notes. And she and mopped stuff. the floor for me yesterday, you mopped guys. The floor for she free. Did. Not free. She brought me food. I did. It was good food. Speaking too, of that, right? is there food left over in the fridge? Vegetables. 
but they're yummy vegetables. I'm gonna go eat those. Okay. All right, but yeah, a Kirby is all I have to show. But okay. this is a Valentine's Day gift for a friend. So if you need a friend who knows what this is. Where was that sentence going? I don't know where I was going with that, but this guy. Whatever. Wee! You can also do that. Oh no, where'd he go? Bye. Bye. <laughs> those were a little short today. Neither of them did a lot, but they both wanted to show what they made this week. So, all right, moving right along to the comments section. One thing that a lot of people mentioned is that you would like a monthly subscription box. I love this idea. And I've been looking into it more and trying to figure out how to make it work. I can't just add it as a an item in my shop without buying the service that goes with that. So I just have to, you know, find out which one has the best attributes and does what I want. So keep an eye out for that because that will be coming up pretty soon. Uh, okay, um, comments. Oh, about that. Let me know what you'd like to see in the subscription box. Would you like it to be just the monthly sock set or extras? I like the idea of the monthly sock set plus one or two other small surprise extras. Let me know what you think about that. Um, okay, yeah, so the, the higher the price point goes, I, I like the idea of it being affordable and um, just doing the sock set and you know maybe one other little extra might be nice. So anyway, think about it. Let me know if you have an opinion on it. Karen Davis said, in the mystery novel I just finished, the amateur sleuth discovered that the murder weapon was a sharpened knitting needle and the murderer was an avid knitter. So this hobby I love is not only addictive, it is also dangerous. Moral of the story, don't anger a knitter. And Kathy Shemini replied and said, the author of that story must not be a real knitter. We wouldn't risk getting blood on our precious yarn. We'd use the circular needles to strangle. Not that I've really thought about it much. <laughs> Do you know what I would do if I was going to murder somebody? I'd get one of those rings that looks real pretty and you open it up and there's poison in it and you like dump it into the person's coffee and then you snap it back. I've always wanted to do that. I should get one of those rings and just put like sugar in it or something. I guess I could put nothing in it and just pretend. I don't know. Okay, one of the things I mentioned last week was tiny knits. And Bessie Clements said, mochi mochi had tiny knits and there was a book at one point. So I immediately Googled it and found that book used from ABE Books for seven bucks shipped. So I ordered it, so I have it coming. Cause I thought, I think the girls would love to knit those tiny things. There was a tiny hot dog. I mean, so, so cute, a tiny mermaid, adorable. Pink Pineapple Knits commented on my Valentine's Day kit bag that had the nutrition facts. And she said, love the nutrition info, but there's actually 75 grams of protein as the wool portion is a protein fiber. I was like, ah, oh, I should have seen that. I should have, I let that one go by. And she said, I love the Kirby games. I am 46 and in the past couple years started playing the newer Switch Kirby games, LOL. I'm about to be 46 and we don't have any kind of new video game devices. We just have the old school Nintendo with the, the, the pixels are like this big. <laughs> uh, and But the kids, after we talked about it and Gigi's been knitting the Kirbys, we have brought out those games again and they've been playing Kirby. Eight Gammy says, sweater's coming along beautifully. Kirby is so cute, but what is a cassock? And I let her know. Father's cassock is our priest's cassock, which is that black long thing that they wear with the priest collar on it, and it's all buttons. And whenever father would lose a button, some helpful little old lady in the parish would sew whatever they had that was sort of black. He's got dark red and brown and none of them match. And I'm like, this has got to go. So at one, for one of them, I took all the buttons off and I re-sewed new buttons on and they were too small. So I had to like smallen every buttonhole. That's a pretty nice cassock. I see them in it every now and then. I'm like, look at you with all your buttons on. 
uh, she, she says, oh, Gigi, I am that grandma that does the cute little cookies and treats and surprises. I have eight grandchildren from 15 to 25 years old. Miss the little ones these days, but the older are still fun to surprise. That's awesome. We were talking about this snack and how it's such a, a grandma snack because grandmas have time to make cute snacks like that. I would totally buy it, but I wouldn't make it. Uh, Karen Wooley Designs said, Hi, Devin. The new internet email rules are rules and not laws. They are for Gmail and Yahoo to help with spam avoidance. It's such a pain, but I had to do it too. She says, I'm an artist, but before that, I was a techie. I wrote software for a living. So Karen does everything. That's kind of amazing if you can do that. Before, in another life, I actually wrote directions for software. I, did, I worked as a technical writer for a little while, which was actually great training for writing patterns because I learned a lot, but I actually loved writing software instructions, if you can believe that. It's really interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Crazy. But anyway, with regard to the email, my husband has become like obsessed with compliance. He even, I think, purchased some sort of service that makes sure that all of my emails are getting through and that they're actually, you're, you're only getting emails from me and no one's impersonating me and whatever. He's gotten hardcore into it. So your email situation, at least the ones from me, should be top tier. Okay, knitting fantasies. This week, I only have one pick for you, but it's one that I really, really want to talk about. This is the Wildflower Sweater by Wise Owl Knits, and that's Cheryl Beckridge. Hi, Cheryl, who is a podcast watcher and a friend of mine and a wonderful, wonderful designer. I am not, I kind of live under a rock. Every now and then I look up and I, I look on Instagram and YouTube and I see what people are talking about, but a lot of the time I've got my head down and I'm focused on what I'm doing. So this, this almost passed me by, but I saw Cheryl's sweater and then I saw that Holly over at Mystery Mouse Yarn Co. had kits for it. And I saw the ones that she had cast on, ones, one, I'm not sure, there might be more than one. Probably not. She's a busy lady. And I was like, okay, we have to talk about this sweater and I have to delve into it a little more. So I went last night and I bought the pattern and it, was, it wasn't until I bought the pattern that I realized that she used my yarn. That's all Nitty McPearly yarn. She says it right here. So we have Meadow and Fontaine and Barrel and Trinket and in here somewhere, oh, here it is. It's right, it's hard to see because like that's Fontaine. Up here is Thistle. So here's what's amazing about this pattern. No matter what size you are, you can knit it in one full skein for the main color, plus some minis. You know, I think that's gonna vary a little bit depending on your size and how many colors you wanna use. So like I said, she has one, two, three, four, five, four. She's using four other colors. Uh, and the reason I wanted to bring up Holly is because I went on her Etsy shop and looked at her kits. They are amazing. She has three separate ones. And let me just get in here so that I can um, talk about them. Okay, she has the Little House on the Prairie kit which is a full skein and then five mini skeins that go with this beautiful book cover. I love it so much for $38. That is an amazing deal because that's 200 grams of yarn. That's essentially two full skeins and you're getting them for what 19, it would be like you're getting them for $19 each. That's a really great price. You should go get one. So anyway, that's the Little House on the Prairie tea kit that she has. This one is my favorite. This is the Wizard of Oz Wildflower Tea Kit. And again, it's a full skein plus five mini skeins and it's designed to go with this beautiful book cover. And this is the one that she is knitting. So you can see it worked up 
and it is so, so good. It's amazing. I, I just, I found these and I was like, they are great. I need to tell you about them. She has a couple left in stock, but you should go and order one right now because number one, they are gorgeous. Number two, they are an amazing price. And number three, you're going to kick yourself if you don't. So the third kit she has is a little princess wildflower tea kit. And this is also absolutely gorgeous. Holly, you did a really, really amazing job. These look so good. I hope that you sell out of them today. Let's sell Holly out because we all need to make this. I think I'm actually going to make one, you guys. Um, I just love it. So one thing I noticed is that this, it starts with a provisional cast on. So you do the provisional cast on, and that's easy. If you've never done one before, it's it sounds and it appears harder than it is. You're basically going to make a crochet chain that has loops in it so that you can pick up and knit from there for your cast on. Because then what you do later, that crochet chain holds onto your stitches so that later you can pull it out and you have live stitches there. So that's the purpose of a provisional cast on. And that's what Cheryl did. So she went back and did, and this is an I-cord edge. You do an I-cord bind off here. So I noticed that Holly skipped it on hers. It looks that way anyway. I think Holly is just going with kind of a rolled neck. And I thought if I do one, which I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit of ribbing. I'm not gonna do the I-cord. I just like ribbing. I just like it. Um, this will be, I think, my first time making one of Cheryl's designs. I like the I like her style of pattern writing. She doesn't have detailed directions for techniques that you can Google. Like she'll just say, work your favorite short row that you like. And then you can look up, like, what kind of short row do I want to work? Do I want to do a German short row or, you know, a, a, a wrap and turn? And there are others, but in my humble opinion, if you know those two, you're, you're good. German short rows are my new favorite. I think those are amazing. Um, also, like the provisional cast on, she doesn't explain in detail, step by step, how to do that. But you can always go and look it up on the internet and then you'll know how to do it. So... This is a fingering weight sweater and I super duper think I need one. I think the pattern is on sale and there's a knit along starting on March 1st. I'm not great at other people's dates. So I don't know if I will do it along with the knit along, but here is another one. And she's got a little describing paragraph here about this one. She says, uh, oh, this is, also knit in size two, this is size the second size. And this is made from two skeins of a discontinued yarn from Tuscan Knits and a sock set from Sweet Mountain Crafts. So here, I guess the, the best thing about this picture is that it shows you what it would look like if you did it in only three colors. And then here, she has five colors and Holly's kits offer six colors. So there's options. You can do it however you want. One thing that's important to mention is that she mentions that the skill level is intermediate. Because of the provisional cast on, which in my opinion is optional, but also there are a few places where you are holding three colors, like right here. And I think it's about two rows where you're holding three strands of yarn and you are knitting color work with three separate colors. But again, you don't have to. You could do it so that the center of the flower is the same color as the petals, like if you wanted to skip that difficulty. So it would be easy to gear it down for somebody who is comfortable knitting a color work sweater, but doesn't necessarily want the difficulty of the provisional cast on and the knitting with three colors. So I'm very excited about this. I feel pretty strongly that I'm going to make one. I'm leaning right now toward uh, Valentine being my main color because I don't own a lot of red, but I actually look good in red, like dark, like bright colors, especially reds look good on me. So 
I don't know, but I love Cheryl's colors. I just love it. I love how this trinket section looks. It's so good. I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do or what colors or what, but I'm excited. It's gonna be good. Okay, so here's what happened. As I mentioned before, this is the last story that I have. So if you have a knitting story, please send it to me, devin at knittingmcpearly.com, devin with an I, and that's linked down below in case you don't know how to spell it. Uh, send me your knitting story, and I would love to share it on the podcast. Most people type it out and they like for me to read it, but if you wanna take a video or just an audio recording, that would be awesome too. Okay, this story comes from a podcast watcher named Lori. Hi, Lori. She says, Dear Devin, <clears throat> I have belonged to a small group through my church for about four years. There are seven couples that attend on a regular basis. One couple in particular has been going since the beginning, like my husband and I. Donna and I have not always seen eye to eye. I know that I have rubbed her the wrong way, just as she has me. That said, we pray for each other often and pray with each other often. Through the years, we have grown to love each other. So here's what happened. A few weeks ago, I had a particularly rough day, but I had to go to the grocery store. On the way, I stopped at the mailbox, as I usually do, and I had a letter from Donna. I wondered, what could this possibly be? My first thought was that it's probably a Christmas letter, but that's not what it was at all. You see, as Donna and I have come to know each other, she has seen me knitting in our group and has asked me about it often. I thought maybe she was just trying to find some common ground. And then I read the letter. Here's what she said. Lori, I recently read a book entitled The Shop on Blossom Street. In reading this book, I thought about you and how you love to knit. This fictional story starts with a woman in her early 30s who buys a shop where she can share her love of knitting. A shop where you can buy yarn, knitting supplies, and patterns. A shop where anyone can join a knitting class. She is a two-time cancer survivor who has a dream of a new beginning, a life free from cancer. The story also introduces three ladies who come to join the knitting class. Three very different ladies who have never knitted and wanted to learn for various reasons. The personalities don't always match, but as time goes along, these three ladies bond. A connection of the heart, knitted together over time. And then Lori interjects saying, I can't help but believe Donna was thinking of our relationship when she wrote these words. Donna ended her letter by writing, I really enjoy watching you knit very relaxing, Donna. Lori says, well, I was all choked up after reading her beautiful letter. I wanted to call her and thank her, but I knew I would start bawling. The phone call would have to wait until morning. I did call her the next day, and as I thanked her, I did tear up, but I didn't full on bawl like I would have the day before. I told her I had a rough day yesterday and how much her letter meant to me. She asked if she could help and what was going on. I explained to her the difficult situation I was dealing with and right there on the phone, she prayed for me once again. I'm grateful for knitting and I'm grateful for a friend like Donna who appreciates the craft. Thank you so much, Lori. What a great story. That's so interesting that, that Donna's not a knitter, but she read a book about knitters and how <clears throat> they don't, this particular group of people in the book didn't always see eye to eye and that made her think of your friendship. That's awesome. I love that. Knitting can bring us together even with non-knitters. That's so great. Thank you so much, Lori. If you have a knitting story, send it to me. This is everybody's favorite segment, so we can't let it go empty. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful week and I will see you back here next Sunday. Bye, knitters.